Cool. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining uh, our webinar. My name is Tian Gan. I am a postdoc working at the CSDMS team. And uh, this is Mark Paper. Do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hey, I'm Mark. I'm a research associate at CU, and I work as a research software engineer at CSDMS. Cool. Yeah, uh, today Mark and I are going to talk about data components. And um, can you go to next slide, please? Yep. Yeah, in our presentation, we will first introduce about the CSDMS workbench and one of its major elements, which is basic model interface. BMI actually is the foundation of the data component. And then we will introduce some existing data components, which are created by our team. Followed by that, uh, we will show the general steps uh, to show you how to create your own data component. We also want to talk about the CSDMS and HydroShare capability. This capability will help you to share your tutorial Jupyter notebooks for your data components with the others so they can easily run them and learn about how to use your data component. Finally, um, we will give a live demo using an example uh, soil grace data component and Mark is going to give a summary of uh, today's webinar. So now let's get started. All right. Tian, you're very brave for doing a live demo, but it's gonna be it's gonna be great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. So before we get into the idea of data components, let's give some context. All right. So the, I want to start with the idea of the CSDMS workbench. So this is a set of tools and libraries that are produced by the CSDMS integration facility as well as with help from the CSDMS community as well. Uh, the idea is that uh, tools, libraries, software for building models, for running models, for coupling models. So three elements of the workbench are listed along the bottom here. So Land Lab is a model coupling toolkit. It's also a toolkit that you can use for building models in Python. Uh, it's really cool. It's the most popular element of the CSDMS workbench. On the other side is PyMT. This is also a model coupling toolkit. And it's a little different in that it's used more for working with models written in other languages. So through PyMT, you can couple models written in C, C++, and Fortran, as well as Python, because PyMT is a Python package. So just as an aside, we're actually looking at incorporating PyMT into Land Lab so that we would have just Land Lab. Land Lab would be our model coupling toolkit, but that's a little bit in the future and not quite the topic here, but I'm excited because I think it's a neat idea. All right, so anyway, these two coupling toolkits are listed. In the middle is BMI, the basic model interface. And this is the technology that underpins both of these toolkits. So what is BMI? All right, BMI is the basic model interface. So all that a basic model interface is, is a set of functions. Now these functions are a little special in that they have prescribed names and arguments and return types. But the neat thing is that these, these functions have the same names and arguments and return types across languages. Uh, so the idea is that you could write a model and it could have its own interface, you know, whatever interface you design for accessing information in the model for running the model. But you could also put a BMI on it and then you'd have a standardized interface for accessing and running your model. So that's kind of what a BMI is. I like to start people uh, with, uh, in learning about BMI uh, I like to point people to our documentation. We, we tried to be really careful about writing up a nice description of what BMI is and why it's important and how you can make one. So let me risk the whole webinar by clicking on this link. Uh, okay, good. All right. And maybe Tian, if you could, if you yeah, could put can... the link in the, in the chat, that'd be really cool. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is the documentation page for the for BMI, and it's long. We've got a lot of information here. What I wanted to show you 
was this table. All right, so this table of BMI functions. So this is, this is what the BMI is. It's about 30 functions. Now you don't have to add all of them. Some of them depend upon what sort of grid you're using, but there's 30 functions. There's, it's, it's, it's a bit of work. You can see names like uh, initialize. So the idea of initialize is it would start a model. You can see update, you know, that advances the model by one time step. Uh, there's finalize that's used to stop a model. There's also getters and setters. You can get values or set values in the model. All right, so you can see they have pretty readable names as well. All right, let's go back. Let me get a quick drink. Oops, I'm a little too far. There we go. All right, so I've given you kind of a high level overview of what BMI is. It's, it's a set of functions. But my next bullet here is, what is the benefit of a BMI? Why would you want to include a BMI with your model? And to do this, I've uh, put a picture of my wife's Subaru on the side here. It's gonna make me think. So uh, Tian, I have a question for you. Yep. You come to the office, we practice this, so she's smiling. <laughs> <laughs> when you come to the office, how do you get to the office usually? Uh, I usually drive a car. Oh, okay. So where did you learn how to drive a car? Um, I learned that back in China and got my first driver's license in China. Okay, cool. All right. So the thing is, is that, you know, you're in the States right now and you're able to drive a car just fine, right? You know? Yeah. So that's kind of cool. So the neat thing is that Tian has benefited from a standard, all right? In the sense that, you know, cars have steering wheels cars have accelerator pedals and brake pedals, all right? So there's a standard. So the fact that Tian learned how to drive a car in China and was able to come to the States and drive a car just fine here in Boulder, Colorado is really, a, really because of standards. And so BMI is a standard. And the idea is that, you know, if you have the same set of functions for any model, it makes it easier. Once you've seen one BMI, you've seen them all because it's the same set of functions. All right, so this is the benefit of a BMI. And I, I think I garbled that a little bit, but I, I promise we can talk about that more. And again, please look at that documentation. I think we did a nicer job writing it up there as well. All right, so there's been so much prelude to the content of our webinar. So my last bullet is here. Well, how can a BMI apply to data? This is the basic model interface, not the basic data interface. Well, the thing is, if you think about it, a data set has many analogs to a model. So for example, I think of like the initialize function. You know, initialize is used to start a model. Initialize could be used analogously to open a data set, to open a file. Finalize could be used to close a file. We could use the update function to move to the next time slice, for example, in a file. We could use the get value function to pull out the data from a given time slice. So there are many direct analogs between a model and a data set. And BMI, we think, can apply here. So this is the topic of our webinar, then the idea of a data component. So the way that we've imagined and the way we've implemented this idea of a data component at CSDMS is just a Python package and it provides access to a data set through a BMI. Now the data set will have its own API, you know, and it may have its own, it'll have its own details and everyone's probably different, but because it has a BMI, they'll be the same across different data sets. All right, so we've done some work on this. Let, let's see what we've done so far. So I'm gonna click a link again, All right? And Tian, if you could please yeah, put that in the chat. Awesome, thank I'm you. I'm ready to put it. <laughs> oh, you're way ahead of me. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> All right, so you can see on the CSDMS page, we have a page of data components, okay, written by, uh, mostly by Tian. Tian's the expert. Uh, I wrote a couple because I looked at what Tian did. We've got a contribution from Rich in the community, which is awesome. All right, so just to 
give a, a higher level look at this, you know, you can see that there's a number of particular data sets, as well as some broader data sets as well. You know, each of these would have their own API. You know, if I had to go in and well, you know, Tim will show this, you know, but if I had to go get some ERA, ERA5 data, for example, from ECMWF, you know, it has its own interface to access. I don't know what that interface is right now. I imagine it's probably NetCDF. There's probably something wrapped around NetCDF, but I don't have to know because there's a data component. All I need to know are the BMI functions. I know initialize, finalize, update, get value, for example. So I don't have to even know that it's a NetCDF file or a GRIB file, for example. All I need is the data component with its BMI. All right, so these are some of the ones that we've written so far. Let me go back. Oops, there we go. All right, so data components then are also a part of the CSDMS workbench. So we didn't mention this in the beginning, but just to circle back to that first slide of ours, you know, data components are going to be a part of the whole ecosystem that we have at CSDMS for building, running, and coupling models. All right, so. Now I'm going to turn it back to Tian, who again is the expert, and <laughs> can talk to us a little bit about how to create a data component. Thank you, Mark, and thanks um, for talking about the basic mod interface and showing some data components. Actually, we hope the community can also contribute uh, your own data components, especially when you have a large uh, data set and you want more people to use them um, and or couple your data with uh, other models, which is under the PyMT modeling framework. You can also write your own data components. And today I'm going to use the soil grace data component as an example. Uh, this data component uh, fetches the global graded soil information from the soil grid system. And uh, this system provides the spatial distribution of the uh, some of the soil properties, such as the bulk density, uh, clay, sand, and um, silt uh, content, uh, something like that. But they have some more other so uh, soil pro properties. Um, can you go to the next slide? So when I create uh, the soil grid Python package, um, it includes uh, the soilgrid.py file. In this file, it has a class that downloads the soil datasets from the soil grid system using their uh, web coverage service. And um, there is also a bmi.py file. And um, this uh, file includes another class that wraps the class from the soilgrid.py file uh, with the basic model interface. After I uh, finished the so, uh, soil pack package, I used the bibleizer to run over this package and generate the PyMT soil package. Mark, would you want to add more and talk about what bibleizer is? Oh yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, so the so we talked about uh, PyMT already. The bibleizer is another tool that's in the CSDMS workbench, and it's used to uh, wrap a BMI wrapped model or data set in any of our supported languages like Python, C, C++, or Fortran. And it makes it into a Python package that you can import in PyMT. So the Bablizer, we actually have a paper in JOS that's under review. It's almost done, so it should be out pretty soon. Okay, cool. Um, oh. Uh, can I just add yeah. one thing? <laughs> one thing I want to mention about that, actually, um, you can directly use the soil with a Python package to download the data. If you uh, don't need to couple your data sets with some of the model components under the PyMT modeling framework. Okay, next slide. Um, so after you create your data component, you may want to create some tutorial notebooks and share with others and help them easily run them and learn your data component. And the CSDMS and Hydro Share capability can help you achieve this goal. Um, so I want to provide a little bit background about what Hydro Share is. So Hydro Share is a web-based hydrologic information system for people to share their data models or tools and collaborate and solve research problems. Um, next slide. 
And in Hydro Share, you can put any kind of files uh, for sharing. And there are some additional data functions for several data types, uh, such as time series, geographic feature, or geographic raster, and also multidimensional space time data. Hydro Share also provides uh, uh, data publication functionalities. When you publish your data or models, or even your Jupyter notebooks, you can get a DOI and uh, cite it in your research paper. Uh, next slide. So in HydroShare, there are some social functions to encourage collaboration. One of it is the resource access control. So um, when you use that, you can uh, only choose the trusted HydroShare users to get your data, but you can also put your data sets as public so anyone can discover and access them. Uh, HydroShare also supports several web applications for data analysis, visualization, and modeling. And one of the example uh, is the quasi Jupyter Hub, which is shown uh, in this figure at the bottom right. Okay. Uh, in quasi Jupyter Hub, uh, on the left figure, you will see in the quasi uh, Jupyter Hub, there are several server options. One of them uh, is the CSDMS Workbench. In this server option, uh, we installed the PyMTN LAN lab, which is from the CSDMS workbench. And we also have some scientific uh, Python packages installed to support analysis and visualization, such as matplotlib, xarray, and numpy, and some other uh, Python packages. Um, so we also put uh, many uh, tutorial notebooks for PyMT and LAN lab for people to discover them from HydroShare and run them using the Quasi Jupyter Hub so that they don't need to install anything and directly uh, learn how to use PyMT or LandLab. Okay. So now I'm going to uh, give a live demo. Yeah. Uh, finger <laughs> crossed and hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay, cool. All right. Okay, uh, I will start sharing. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Yep, it's all good. Great, cool. So here is the HydroShare um, homepage. If I go to discover and type soil grades, and you will find out the, uh, the Jupyter notebooks for this data component. And this is the resource landing page. Uh, for the Jupyter notebooks of the soil grades data component, you can enter the abstract information, the keywords, and also uh, those are the resource files. One is for the soil grades Python package, and one is for the PyMT soil grades uh, Python package. Uh, those two are the tutorial notebooks for them. And if you click on open with and select a quasi Jupyter hub, and remember to select CSDMS Workbench because uh, only this server option are installing the correct uh, Python packages for you to run the, uh, those notebooks. And click on Start. Uh, this process really takes uh, two to three minutes to load. So uh, probably you need to be a little bit patient. <laughs> okay. We're just gonna sit here and stare awkwardly at the screen waiting for it to load. Um, Tian, we were supposed to rehearse some small talk. I forgot to do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, oh, okay. That's, yeah. So, one thing maybe I can mention later. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So, I will open a soil grades uh, geometry notebook. Okay, uh, in this tutorial, it includes three sections. Uh, one is the brief introduction and uh, a package installation. The second section is to show two examples how to use the soil grades data component to download data sets for visualization. The third section is to guide you write your own code and download different uh, soil property data sets. Uh, the first step is to install the uh, soil grades Python package. And uh, in the Quasi Jupyter Hub, uh, you are allowed to install 
um, your own Python packages. This is very helpful because when there is a new component, whether it's a model component or data component, uh, we don't need to update the CSDMS uh, workbench uh, server option. You can just uh, add a command for package installation in your Jupyter notebook. So in the second section, it will show us two examples. In a, uh, as I have uh, shown in the SoilGuiz package, there are two uh, Python files. The SoilGuiz class is in the SoilGuiz.py file and the BMI SoilGuiz uh, class is in the BMI.py file. The first class is designed to, uh, for users to download data sets. And uh, the BMI SoilGuiz uh, class uh, actually wraps the SoilGuiz class with a basic model interface. So the first example is to use the SoilGuiz class to download the data. In this class, it includes the get coverage data method to access the uh, soil property data from the SoilGuiz system. And the first cell actually is trying to download uh, the soil page data for the study area in Senegal. If you want to learn more about uh, the details of the different parameters, you can click on the parameter setting link. It will show more details about that. So let's run the first cell and download the data set. Okay. Uh, the second cell is trying to uh, show the metadata information. And uh, you can see uh, it shows the variable name, units, and the corresponding service URL information. Um, and the third cell is to make a plot of this data set. Okay. And the second example is to use the BMI service class to download the same data set. Uh, actually, BMI are not designed for people to use. Uh, if you want to learn how to use the data components under the PyMT modeling framework, uh, you're welcome to try out with the PyMT uh, service uh, Jupyter notebook. But uh, here I want to uh, show you how to use some of the BMI uh, methods to access the data set as well as the metadata information. Um, when you use the BMI, the first step is to use the configuration file and to initiate a data component. Actually, this step is trying to download the data set from the service system. Okay, if you have interest, want to know what is in this configure file, we can show that. So uh, it includes the parameter information, which is uh, exactly the same that we have seen from this method. Okay, this cell actually is using the variable related uh, methods from the BMI soil grid class to check the variable information of this soil data set. It's actually like doing the retrieving the metadata information of the uh, soil data sets, uh, like uh, variable name, unit, location, type, and its associated uh, variable grade. And this helps to use the grade related methods um, of the class to check the graded uh, metadata information, uh, like the grid rank, size, the shape spacing, and also it's uh, lower left origin coordinate uh, information. Um, and this type, uh, step is using the get value method from the BMI method uh, to retrieve the um, so, uh, so data dataset. And last cell is to do the visualization uh, of the data set. So this is exactly the same as the one we have seen from the example one. Uh, the third section uh, is to guide you uh, write your own code, but I'm not going to show the details. Only one thing to mention is that when you uh, write your code, actually you can double click the section to check with the answer to see if it's um, same as the answer we provided. Okay. So here is the PyMT soil grades. Um, 
I won't go to go into the details, but uh, I want to mention if you look into the code, you will find out uh, it's very similar as what I've shown for the BMI server grids class to access the map data as well as the data sets. Yeah, and you will see the plotting are uh, same too. Um, I think that's all my demo. I will stop sharing. Okay. Yeah. And I can start sharing again. Uh huh. Okay. One little while I'm doing this, one little note um, is that uh, one little note is that you know, you saw in in Tian's notebooks when she used the API from Soil Grids, it was only a couple lines. But when she used the BMI, it was several lines of code. And that's kind of the trade-off, you know, maybe the BMI, because it has to be more general, is, you know, it, it takes more lines of code in order to do the same task. You know, another little side, another little interesting thing too, is that because the BMI is written in Python, the BMI and the PyMT version of the Soil Grids component are very similar. Like if you inspect Tien's BMI notebook and the PyMT notebook, you'll see code that is rather similar. Again, and that's because they're both Python. You know, if we had written the, the data component in C, for example, then they'd be quite a bit different. Yeah, I also put uh, the HydroShare links for Lala, PyMT, and also SoulGrid's uh, Jupyter Notebooks. That is uh, the information I want to talk about while loading the container. But since it loads faster, <laughs> I just put it here. Yeah. It's so fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I did a little bit task before the webinar. Yeah. <laughs> that is why. Awesome. All right. So let's take a look. Here's a, a summary of what we've seen today in the webinar. All right. So one. The concept of BMI, that's basic model interface, can be extended to data sets, and it works pretty well. It's really kind of a, a neat idea. Okay, so two, uh, a data component is a Python package. And I should mention as well, we you know we choose Python because we have basically chose Python as our, our hub language at CSDMS. We, we could have done this in other languages, but we have just decided to standardize on Python, All right? So a data component is a Python package that provides access to a data set through a BMI. The data set will have its own API, but we're not gonna care about that as a user. We can just use the BMI instead for simplicity. All right, three, data components can be coupled with models in a framework such as PyMT or LandLab. Now we didn't show much of that today, but that is possible. And then four, we have developed a set of data components. Mostly Tian has done that. We've also had some contributions in the community. Yeah, Rich. Uh, but you guys can make these as well. And it's really cool. If we have a big collection of data components, we'll make it easier for other people to access data and use them within a coupling framework. All right. So those are the takeaways from today's webinar. Okay. Tian, is there anything else you can think of? Uh, yeah, I put some information in the chat. Uh, especially for people who have an interest to create your own data component. Uh, so after you finish that, you actually can create a wiki lab from our CSDMS website as a lab information and help the students and other researchers to learn about your data component. And we have the also have the model REPL. Uh, when you have your new data component available, you can actually register your data component in there and they will be shown um, on the list in the future, like what we have shown the country, we have seven. Hopefully we will see more from the community. Yeah, that's uh, my note. Cool, all right, thanks, thanks Dan. All right, is that it then? Uh, yeah, I think so. All right, yeah. thanks everybody. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll stick around and we'll try to answer questions. <laughs> if you'd like, we're gonna try to answer questions. Okay, if you'd like, you can ask questions in the chat or you can just unmute your mic and ask us directly. Yeah. Can we ask questions, please? Yeah. yeah. OK, thank you, Tian and Bob, for this nice presentation, to be honest with you. So my first, my first question to you 
uh, is your code limited to a specific data source in order to download the uh, soil properties? Or uh, you can download the soil properties from any website? And what kind of the soil properties? It's like, for example, I mean, what is the type of the data? It is a graded data or it's point data and you consider in your code in order to make interpolation between that in order to produce a map-based uh, soil. So this is main my main question for you. Okay, uh, th thanks a lot for your questions. Um, uh, I will try to answer the ones I remember. <laughs> if I miss someone, you can just remind me. Uh, first for the soil, uh, data sets, this data component is only uh, working on the data sets provided by the soil grid system. I can put the system's link to you, but if you want to create another data component downloading the soil data sets from other system, that would be totally fine. Or if you have your own soil data sets in, and you want to create a data component, that would be fine. So there's no limitation what kind of data uh, to download uh, like what kind of data you want to wrap with the as a data component. And uh, specifically for this uh, soil property data set, it's uh, raster data. So it's covering the whole uh, global scale. Um, they have more uh, soil uh, property data sets and not just limited the ones I have mentioned. I can send you the link and you can check into the details and see uh, if there are some properties you have interest in uh, any other questions that I miss? Or do I answer your question? <laughs> yeah, you answer my question. Thank you, Tayan. And to be honest, why I'm asking this question because you know, uh, we are using uh, different types of the hydrological modeling, uh, particular, mm -hmm. yeah. particularly at continental scale, like the wild hydro, bar flow, whatever. And you know, from each model to another model, maybe the soil properties, I don't know, the shape of the data, the type of the data, it could be different. So mm -hmm. the, the question that, for example, if I wanted to use or create my own data for the soil properties in order to feed the wild hydro model, is that enough? Or do I need to look at other data sources in order to obtain all the data that I need to feed the wild hydro model. For example, wild hydro model is one example of the hydrological model. Or does this data that you are already, or the tools that you created, we can obtain all the soil properties that the hydrologic modeling needs? Um, so it depends what kind of soil, property, uh, soil properties uh, the model requires. And then uh, you need to look into the soil grid system and see if that system provides the corresponding soil property data. Am I answering your question? Yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I will put uh, the soil grid system information uh, in the chat. So you can check uh, whether there are um, data is available to uh, be used as the input for your model. And yeah, and then you can use the, if, if they have the corresponding properties, then you can use the Zorwitz Python package to download the data set. I see there's a question from Hunter in the chat as well. Mm -hmm. I think I can take this one. Tin, you can back me up on this if you'd like. So uh, Hunter asks, uh, would you suggest model development in LandLab in another repository such as GitHub instead of HydroShare for version control? Or does HydroShare work similarly? So I think the answer to the question is, yeah, if you're gonna do some development in LandLab, it should be in a GitHub repository. Uh, HydroShare would be more of a place for you to host the result, to host running the model. So yeah, that's right. Yeah, does that sound good? So yeah, development in and use a GitHub repository for your source code, but use HydroShare then in order to distribute your model and to let others use it. Yeah, or if you, uh, after you finish uh, one LaLab component, 
using GitHub and maybe you want to create some uh, Jupyter notebooks and show how to use your LANAP component, then you can share your Jupyter notebooks in HydroShare and others can uh, easily access, discover them and run them on quasi Jupyter Hub. Okay, thank you, Tian, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyone else, any qu other questions? Okay, well, thank you very much for your attending, all right? Yeah, thank you so much. All right, bye-bye.